Hi everybody, Mom and Nature here. Welcome back. Today we are going to make a lasagna and we're going to do all the steps from the pasta right to the finished product, okay? Now, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube about how to make your pasta with your KitchenAid or how to build a lasagna, but nobody actually put it all together in one video. So here it is. Mom and Nature here. for the pasta. I've got my paddle attachment in my KitchenAid and I'm going to start off by putting two cups of all-purpose flour, unbleached all-purpose flour, right into the bowl. Okay, and then I'm going to add just a pinch of pink Himalayan salt, all right, which I figure is about, you know, between an eighth and a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm just going to give that a quick mix to get that blended. I pre-crack the eggs because I don't want to have to deal with shells when I'm putting them into the bowl, right? So this way, if I have any shells, I can pick them out of here and then add them to the bowl one at a time, just like that. Add in a little bit at a time until it's all together. I'm going to put in that last egg. Um, and you can do this with your food processor, you could do it by hand. It's really pretty simple. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. And then right here in the home stretch, I'm going to put a drizzle of olive oil. Now, not even a tablespoon, just a little bit. And we'll get that in there. Now what I have here is nice and crumbly, so I'm going to switch out the paddle for the hook. So I gotta lower the bowl, get this baby out of there. All right, now we're gonna put in our hook. And we're gonna pull it all together. All right, when it all pulls together and the inside of the bowl is pretty clean, you know that you're done. And what we're gonna do now is just wrap it with some plastic wrap and let it rest for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, I've got my gravy cooking over here, nice and bubbly, and I've got some sweet Italian sausages in there. I think for my taste, they have the best flavor, and when we go ahead and start layering our lasagna, I'm gonna crumble some of those up and put them in the layers. While the dough for our lasagna noodles is resting, let's get to work on our filling. Now, I just diced up about a quarter of a large Vidalia onion and a quarter of a very large red pepper, and I'm just gonna saute them a little bit until they get good and soft and translucent. So the veggies are getting nice and soft. I took a couple sausages out of the pot so they could cool off a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is just take them apart by hand. I'm gonna peel the skin and make little chunks into the pan. I turn the flame way down low so that I can take my time getting this all together. I'm telling you, if you don't have a big pan like this, invest in one. I do so many things in this. All right, so I think that's good. Look how pretty that is. Now I'm just doing a lasagna for two, so I'm just gonna do like an eight by eight square pan. If you were cooking the larger nine by 13 pan for more people, of course, you would have more than what I did here. And I'm gonna add some of my gravy. Ooh, baby. I wish you could smell this, it's just incredible. All right. I'm gonna let that simmer down a little bit with some black pepper, some pink Himalayan salt, and I have to add extra oregano. Savory, savory, okay kids? I don't do basil. If you've been watching me long enough, you already know 
I don't like sweet Italian food, it's got to be savory. And some garlic powder. I'm just going to let that cook down a little bit. And this will be layered into our lasagna. Oh boy, oh boy. One of the key layers in our lasagna is a good bachamel sauce. Simple, simple, simple. Ready? In a small saucepan, I just put one stick of butter. Okay, that's a half a cup. And I've got it on a medium flame. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. When this melts down, I'm gonna add a little bit more than a quarter cup of flour. Get that whisked in real nice and turn the flame down. We don't want it to scorch. Although we do want a nice nutty aroma, the kind that you get when the butter starts to really condense down. All right, so that's good and combined. This, by the way, is a mini whisk that I got from Bon Cook. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite ki kitchen tools. Look at how beautifully it did that. Can't do that with a fork. All right, so that's all come together. I'm going to add a little bit of milk just to get to the consistency that we want. Because after all, this is a cream sauce. Oh, look at that. Nice, 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 nice. All right, I'm going to put in a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. And I'm going to add some nutmeg. It's one of those flavors that when somebody eats your lasagna, they'll say, Ooh, that's a very interesting flavor. I wonder what that is. All right, let's start making pasta. Ready? <laughs> All right, first things first, we've got to take the cover off, right? Some of them come off, mine just flips up. And then we want to remove the thumb screw. And when you look at your pasta roller, you'll find that the end, of course, is square because it's going to grab onto the engine, which is a nice square hole, rather. And you'll see there's a little nub. A little nub is going to go into this little hatch on the side. All right, that's how the whole thing's not going to spin around. So slip that right in there. Return your thumb screw. Okay, and there we have it. So I'm going to start by unwrapping my dough. And what I did was I set out a baking pan with flour in it so I don't make a big mess all over my island. Right? Okay. Um, we're going to need quite a bit of flour because in between steps we're going to wind up adding more flour as we go. Because the last thing you want is for your dough to stick inside your roller. This does not get washed. This does not go in the water. What you'll do is you just make sure that your dough stays nice and floured so nothing sticks. It comes with this beautiful little brush so that you can sort of get in there and clean out the crumbs. But what I also like to do is take and use a Norwex, and this is a counter cloth. And it's just about the size of one of those um, half paper towels. Okay, so we'll do that later. For now, I'll take my dough in half because that gives me about eight ounces and we're going to shape it into an oblong okay something just like that we're going to turn our mixer on at about a number two two and here we go And of course we started at the number eight size, so that's the thickest that it comes in. We're just gonna allow it to feed it to us nice and gentle. Beautiful. And now I'm gonna fold it in half, flour it again on both sides. Just a little, just a little. And then we're gonna go ahead and feed it through again. I'm going to 
going to do that one more time. Then I'll turn it off and I'm going to jump over to the size six. Make sure this is nice and flowered. Sticking is our enemy. We don't want any sticking. That's all right. If it ain't messy, you're not having fun. We're supposed to be having fun. All right, number two. We don't want to push or pull the dough. We want to let the machine do all the work for us. And of course, keep your hair, fingers, and jewelry all the way from that. Yeah, we don't want any body parts in our lasagna. down to the thinnest setting and as your pasta starts to get really long and unruly you can definitely cut it into pieces we're going to be doing that later anyway so I got it down to a number one thickness which is super super thin and now I'm cutting the pasta into sheets the size that will fit in my pan I'm going to take and put these on a drying rack for a little while. All right, cheese. What I have here is a 16 ounce container of whole milk ricotta, about 16 ounces of shredded whole milk mozzarella, and then a generous handful of some Parmesan cheese. What I'm gonna add to this is some oregano. Lots of oregano. Oh, about a teaspoon and a half, maybe two teaspoons. And some garlic powder. Again, yeah, let's just do it. Alright, now what's going to hold all of this together is a good egg. Not a bad egg, but a good egg. <laughs> Alright. And that all gets mixed together and becomes another layer in our lasagna. Okay, the pasta is dry. All of our fillings are prepared. And I brushed this off. Now what I'm going to do, because it's pretty well dried off. Any little bits of dough that may have been stuck in there, they're all dried up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my Norwex cloth through there. Now we're going to get ready to boil the pasta. So we have a great big pan. This is a 14 inch pot actually with just a little bit of water in it, just a couple of inches. And when that starts to boil and we're almost there, we're going to put our pasta sheets right in there just for about two or three minutes. When they come to a boil, then I'll pull them out and put them right here on my cooling rack, which is inside of that baking sheet that we used earlier for the flour. There we go, aren't they pretty? They sort of look like little bed sheets floating around in the water. <laughs> I'm gonna use a great big spatula so that I can pick them up and place them without tearing them. So let's see. There's the first one. I'm just gonna flip it over. Oh yeah, that works very well. So now we're just about done and you can definitely see a difference in the texture between the ones that have been boiled and the ones that have not gone into the water yet. This is still very much like dough, but this is tougher and it's a lot more like the pasta that you know. Oh boy, so now we have all the pieces ready. All we have to do is assemble it. Let's go. So I'm just doing a small one because it's just the two of us, my husband and I. I'm wearing gloves because this is gonna get messy. And what I did is I put some of my gravy in the bottom of the pan. This way, nothing will burn when I put it all in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and put a sheet of pasta right in there. Look at that. I mean, that's like a perfect fit. That's pretty darn good. All right. I'm going to use the same spoon for all of my 
layers because it's all gonna get mixed together anyway, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my bechamel and this is gonna be, you know, like the glue that holds it all together. Oops. And this is why we're wearing gloves. And then I'm going to add some of my cheese. It's so much easier to just get in there with your fingers, you know. Don't fool around trying to make it work with the spoon. You just frustrate yourself. All right, and then this is the sausage and vegetable mix that we made earlier. So I'm just gonna dot that around because this is only the first layer. Okay, now what you could do, other options of course, is you could add any vegetables that you like. Sometimes I add spinach. Today I just wasn't in the mood for that. So that's it, those are our layers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a new piece of pasta. Let's go in the other direction this time. There we go. And same thing again. We're going to start with the bechamel, do the cheese, and then our vegetables and sausage mix. Isn't that fun? <laughs> when we're almost at the top of the pan, what we want to do is put your last lasagna noodle on top, and then we're going to add, I'm going to add what's left of my cheese. Okay, this goes right on top. And then the rest of this gets finished the way that you would top a pizza. I'm just gonna put some sauce, some gravy, right from the pan. this bakes it'll bake down through the layers you know and I've got the oven preheated to 400 so all I'm gonna do now is top this with some mozzarella lots and lots because we want this to get golden and bubbly some parmesan and then our seasonings. You already knew what I was gonna say, right? Oregano, garlic, there you go. Now you can see my lasagna is right about at the edge of my pan. We are right there pushing the limit. Into the oven she goes. I'm gonna let that bake at 400 for about 30 minutes, but I'm gonna keep a close eye on it because I want to make sure that the cheese doesn't burn. We know it's done when the top is golden and bubbly and you can see the sauce bubbling in the bottom of the pan. Clear glass casserole pans are the best for this reason. Here she is fresh out of the oven. Look at all golden and bubbly. That's exactly what we want. And we're going to let that rest for a couple minutes. While that's resting, make sure that the gravy is nice and hot for adding to our plates. All right, it's time for the yummy shot. <laughs> you know, not the money shot, but the yummy shot. All right, so here's my slice. Mm. 
is really very good. Oh my goodness. And the best part is, because I was in control of every single ingredient, I know that this is wholesome, it's good for me. Mm. Oh, I can't wait for you to try it, it's so good. <laughs> Remember, till next time, oh, mama loves you. Make sure you click subscribe if you want to see more. Bye now. Hey, what are you doing in there? Nothing. <laughs>